You know Mary Tyler Moore? Oh, very well. We did Night of a Thousand Stars together. Oh, funny story. She has diabetes. And that was a clip from one of my favorite gay films, Girls Will Be Girls, starring Jack Plotnick. Uh, what are the other two ladies? W. No, oh, it's uh, Coco Peru. Coco Peru. And then the one that eats a Barla? can of cheese. Barla. Yeah. Barla. Yes. Uh, this is Movies the Podcast. Uh, this week we're covering Pride film or gay films in, in honor of Pride. Uh, my name's Rob. This is Jordan. This is Brenda. And this is Curtis. Save the best gay for last. (laughs) Curtis of Anal Bleaching, the podcast. (laughs) (laughs) And our producer extraordinaire. I'm Rusty. This is Fran, right? Fran. (laughs) Franiel. In honor of Pride, uh, Stan has decided to come uh, dressed in drag. And it's (gasps) Fran, the producer. Fran Leibovitz. I love your shoes, by the way. (laughs) I love your tuck. So that's why that roll of duct tape fell out of his pants. Uh, oh, his that bag. was a roll of duct tape. That's why RuPaul's Drag Race got canceled. They ran out of duct tape. <laughs> they didn't know what to do. Super glue it. Hot glue gun. Ooh, crafts. <laughs> so DIY. Uh, this is going to be not that every episode in the past has been an overtly gay episode, but this is our Pride episode. So we're all excited about being just a little extra gay today. Yay, gay. <laughs> <laughs> And for those oh wait, we're supposed to not be so gay. Well, because the censor said if you were any gayer, they would have to put you on Bravo. We did get banned in Iowa, by the way. No, that was. They said more Brenda government. to butch it up. <laughs> more Brenda to butch it up. Brenda does bring the testosterone <laughs> if level Brenda's up a little bit. Brenda's balls were any bigger, they'd be Rob's. <laughs> My Mexican balls. They'd be in Rob's mouth. <laughs> oh, wow. Um, so let's play a little catch up. What's everybody been up to? Oh. Anal bleaching. <laughs> Stop talking. So you're stealing his story. <laughs> no, I'm asking him. Like, I want to hear the oh, there's story. Oh, there's a did question you, mark at the end of did that. Did you get anal no, bleaching? Anyways. <laughs> you know you can't do that at home with a Q-tip and Clorox. <laughs> now you tell me. I learned the hard way. <laughs> I saw it on Pinterest. <laughs> what have we been doing? Um, I am very excited. We saw the other day we screened as a group um, interview with the vampire. In the theater. In the theater on the big screen, which was amazing. That's so funny because I don't remember being there. (laughs) It's weird that we didn't invite girls. Boys night. Boys night. Boys night. There were girls there. Let's be honest. Well, that, you know. (laughs) (laughs) There were ladies. (laughs) I don't think anybody knows a lady. There were broads. Well, it was we. Uh, I forgot to, how depressing that movie yeah. was. We have friends who and uh, Jordan's associate roommate, my partner, his partner <laughs> <laughs> at my law firm, yeah. my partner. Uh, people as, as Esquire. Yeah, people <laughs> love that movie. Like people just adore. That's their favorite movie, and I hadn't seen it in probably a decade. It's a beautiful film, and I think it holds up really well. I, I mean, it, it, I, I didn't think it holds up yeah. really well. Yeah. It's. It was like Rob said. It was just. A, it was sad. I didn't realize how sad it was. I think, it, the, I had watched it so often that I either focused on a score. Or I just really enjoyed a lot of the performances, and this time I was kind of watching it from a perspective. And maybe it's because you had told me you hadn't seen it in ten years, mm-hmm. so I was curious, kind of looking at it from that point of view. What would you think of it now? And I just felt really sad the entire time. <laughs> Yeah, it, it definitely had it had a sh- ton of gay undertones in it. But Do you know what makes me sad about it is that Kirsten Dunst peaked. No, she in didn't. That film. <laughs> if you bring up melancholia, I am throwing you out of this. What room. about Bachelorette, sucker? Oh, I love Bachelorette. What, what's that line? Oh, uh, she's like, that's not on the itinerary. And Kirsten wait, Dunst wait. says, reviving a fucked up bitch wasn't on the itinerary. <laughs> so Kirsten Dunst is having right now. She's having her end of career Betty White resurgence. Uh, with Bachelorette, <laughs> All good because things. she peaked thirty years ago. <laughs> with, uh, I know. God, that was twenty. That movie is twenty years old. Twenty years old. Yeah. It did age well. I think I was mostly. It's not a. It's a good movie. It's not a great movie. It's got some amazing. Stuff. And you know, and, and the to sets think, are amazing. And to think that now we've kind of become overwhelmed with the vampire genre. That this movie came out really before that. It was kind of the start of that new romantic. You know, sappy vampire story. Yeah, they were like was... sensual and violent, and they were kind of scary still. Yeah, I, I it was a very that. sexual. Over... And I and I didn't realize Tandy Newton was in it. Um, Helen McCrory. It's an all star. All these uh, Why future are stars. Brenda on their phones. They're updating their resumes. <laughs> 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 
might need to be. Yeah. Um, they got my email. I saw an older <laughs> movie uh, that was as a classic. I rented American Beauty came in Netflix. Oh yeah. And I was really surprised that uh, I th- still think the performances stand up well. But I think like Net Benning's obviously perfect in that movie. But I think so many other people have uh, drawn ideas from that well. Mm-hmm. that it seemed sucked dry. We mm-hmm. forget how original that film was when it came out, but then even Alan Ball kind of sucked it dry with Six Feet Under, which I adore. Right. But he kept taking, everyone keeps taking ideas from that film, uh, which makes me sad because it was, like I it, said, it's it was like, like it sucked so, dry. It, can't, it, like it created its own subgenre. Like when you're watching mm-hmm. it, you're thinking, is this meta? Like, But it's so old. It's weird, and it has so many references from Blue Velvet and uh, Sunset Boulevard. Is it 97? Oh, God, it must have been 97 or 98 because um, Annette Bening lost the Oscar to Hilary Swank. But it was, it, yeah, it just made me sad because it, it, it is a great Ooh, 99. movie. 99. Oh, it is a great movie, but yeah, a lot of those ideas have been taken. I mean, that was, what, 14 years ago? 15 years ago? Wow. And some really great performances in it. Um, Wes Bentley. Allison Janney oh, as well. Chris Cooper. Who is amazing. Chris, I love Chris Cooper so much in everything that he does. Um, and Kevin Spacey, who oh, I mean I, everybody in it. I Ex- love him so much, and I, I, House of Cards is is between oh. seasons right now, and, and just an amazing reminded me how I an amazing I, actor he really is. Yeah. The two things that I watched uh, recently were um, I watched the original Buffy the Vampire Slayer, the movie oh, with Chrissy yeah. Swanson. Um, it was. T- no, no, it does not hold up well at all. And well, now, it's... and now, I hadn't seen it. I hadn't seen it in so long that I'm now a huge fan of the series. And I was reading some some trivia about it and how uh, Josh Whedon was so angry that they took the script from him and they completely changed it up. And that he respects Donald Sutherland but hates him because he Donald Sutherland refused to ri- read the screenplay as it was and decided to rewrite all of his own dialogue. Oh, let's not pretend like Joss Whedon's God. I'm mean, not, not saying that. <laughs> but so, if it's your material, it's your premise. I know. Um, I still think it's a fun Saturday night afternoon movie. Yeah. It's up there with the craft, and like I mean, it's and maybe it just it just doesn't hold up well. But uh, the other movie I finally got around to watching was The Girl with a Dragon Tattoo. <gasps> I was so the original. No, well, I've seen Hell the original. No. I hadn't seen the remake. Oh, you just now saw the remake. Oh, I am so pissed that I did not see that in theater. That movie was epic of how beautifully shot it was. On our drive over here, Curtis and I were talking about opening sequences. I didn't realize how 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 meticulous Fincher is with his um, opening sequences. You you look at this one, which was breathtaking. You see the one from Fight Club. You see you remember the one from the Social Network. I don't Panic Room. Uh, oh, Panic Room. That yeah. that was very. And um, yeah. What's the other? What I don't remember the opening sequence or seven though. Seven. Oh, that had one of the best ones. Was where it, it was like showing crime he, scene photos? And yeah. it was how he made the books and how he took oh, his yeah. finger uh, tips off, and then like the credit sequence was backwards, and he never did the cat. I mean, he just. I you know I think I'm at a point where he he might have he might have sneaked in there as my favorite director right now because, you know, you and I have been going back and forth, Curtis, about. Just his body of work is so impressive. So I, I, I think anything, I just want to see more of him now. And even though I've seen all of his work, but you can appreciate it at a different. I can, way. yeah, definitely appreciate well, it's it. It's like, oh, sorry, it's like box office with a lot of brains. And Christopher Nolan's box office with a lot of brains, but Christopher Nolan is getting to be like, come on, let's do something else. But I think David Fincher, every single thing is different. Christopher Nolan, or Christopher Nolan's for me is falling into that Wes Anderson where. This is what they can do, and they do it well, but they're not stepping outside that comfort zone. This is my universe. Let me put new characters in. Yeah. Yeah. But no. We're not even new characters. Just just, just change our names. Right. I'm just glad you watched Girl with Dragon Tattoo because I... I, I, I want to see it again, movies. and I think yeah. now that I've seen it, I'd like to see it with you just to kind of pick it apart. And the the score, you know, we'll, we're going to cover scores more in depth in the future episode, but that that score was just beautiful. Um uh, yeah, th- that's that was my catch up, and I'm glad that I finally saw that movie. Me too. Well, unlike that interview with a vampire screening, I guess I'm invited. <laughs> <laughs> um, I finally watched uh, the original but, Footloose, which I can't believe I'd never I've seen. I've never before. seen it. This is why you don't get invited because you watch Footloose. No, I'm, just kidding. <laughs> oh. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I've, I've never Footloose. seen the original Footloose either. <laughs> but you gotta come, Liz. Now Brenda told me she was watching it, and I was really excited because I actually love Footloose. Yeah, yeah, it, it was it was pretty good. Like, yeah. 
I, I haven't seen the remake, so I, I can't speak on it. But um, what's it called? It was it was weird to see like Christopher Penn, or in the movie he's uh, credited as Christopher Penn, but Chris Penn, you know, young and skinny. Oh, and all yeah. those, you know, the soundtrack is so iconic. Even if, if you haven't seen the film, like, you know all the songs. So it's, it's funny to see all the scenes that they're incorporated into. Unless you're Romeo and Michelle, who just don't know the lyrics of that song. <laughs> I don't know the lyrics to that song. I know the first line, and that's it. I don't think anyone knows the lyrics okay, to it. There, there's actual lyrics? Slap on your Sunday shoes. <laughs> Kenny Loggins doesn't know Do the lyrics to it. Yeah, Rob, <laughs> Rob's been watching that movie since he was a little boy in Mexico. Oh, we were going to bring that up again. That was weeks ago, Rob. <laughs> and you're still asking for my papers. <laughs> and you still haven't brought us a copy of your social security card. Rob, it's always got to be somebody. HR this. needs it. I'm sorry. Peg and HR said, Peg Rob is... does not bring this in. Oh, she's texting me right now. Rob, No, Rob's texting. Rob, are you on Scrub? <laughs> no. Dane's listening now. Yeah. <laughs> So anyways, um, <laughs> Foot, I know I need to watch Footloose. Footloose is, I have this list of movies that I pretend that I've seen so people would shut up, um, like Rushmore, or um, there was a movie I just saw that was on that list and I finally watched it. But sometimes I just tell people, oh yeah, I saw it, I didn't like it, or oh, I saw it, yeah, it was okay. Footloose is one I've never seen and I tell people I've never seen it. Like, I'm not trying to pretend that I've seen it. But now I kind of Like you it. were with Oh Brother Where Art Thou? I pretended for so long I saw that movie. <laughs> it's a good movie. For years I'm telling people like, oh yeah, yeah, I saw it, I saw that. Saving Private Ryan. Mm, that was great. Oh yeah, I like that. I like the scene with the... Uh, with the clown. With the military. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, what other one? Um, yeah, Munich. Uh, Munich I had to pretend I saw. I finally have seen these films, but Footloose I do need There's to There's only so many times you can see Munich. I mean, romantic comedy is just... so like, good. They get so old after a while. <laughs> <laughs> Munich's an excellent film. Excellent. Um, is everybody caught up? I don't want to cut anybody off this time like I did last time. Oh my time. God. What we is gotta this? We're going to invite Brenda to more shit. <laughs> I told you not to. Oh, wait. You can come to my bar mitzvah next week. <laughs> uh, your bar mitzvah times three <laughs> to the third power. This is why I don't invite you. <laughs> because you say shit like yeah, that. If you guys are going to invite me, I'm going to give you a reason. <laughs> Ooh. What? what? I, she's coming alive. I like it. You're so sassy. Don't sneeze. It rubs off of you three. <laughs> I hope you I never so. sassy. Don't rub off on us. You know what? If she ever starts selling Cincy, I'm not buying any of that shit. <laughs> I'll buy some freaking Febreze. So today's topic is, you know, in honor of Pride, which in Houston will be uh, June 29th. In the middle of summer, what's is it? Really? Well, for those of you in Iowa, it's Gay Pride. Oh, Gay Pride. We're we're just so used to just. What other pride. pride is there? Lion Pride, Prides of Lion, <laughs> Straight Pride, what's Fran, Immigrant Pride. <laughs> Pegs in HR, bro. I don't see sexual orientation. Wow. Um, yeah. I see conquest. No, <laughs> I like how you know we, when we asked about Straight Pride, even though I'm straight, we all looked at, at Stan. You're a girl. <laughs> You're a minority. You're a hag. You're an honorary member of the community. Yes, she is. As many times as we've hung out. Remember that one time at Blur? You're going to have to. <laughs> you have to be more specific. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Were we sober? Yeah. Um, so in, in honor of gay pride, we are, I, the homework to, to everybody here was to pick their favorite gay film that they like. Um, let's start off with... Curtis. Oh, you mother. I get confused. It's Footloose. <laughs> um, it is Footloose, and I love that. I saw, I took some notes on this because when pe I, people ask me this When part, I sent that homework out like weeks ago. <laughs> but you didn't send any homework out. <laughs> uh, 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 not to be a some... teacher's pet, but I'm ready if you would like to go to my You know what? Let's go to Brenda since no, she's ready. No, now I'm going. No. <laughs> no. Race um, war. I what? I had to come with three. I guess if uh, there'd be a, it's Don't a we comedy. All? <laughs> what? <is that? laughs> Moving along. Okay, it's a comedy, a drama, and then a, uh, a true crime film. Uh, but I'm a cheerleader. I'm gonna have to go with as uh, the top of the three. I think it's just anybody I, should. I love that movie so much. Yeah, it, RuPaul's it, in it. Yeah. RuPaul's playing and, a, a man. And, and <laughs> Eddie Cibrian. I want to like that movie. I, it, I want to like Eddie Cibrian all over. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no, the movie's hysterical, and I think, you know, it doesn't try to get too deep, but just that the, there is a message behind it that, you know, you can't choose who you love, and I think it was really effective. That's a gay movie that has a happy ending, unlike many others. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, drama I had to pick... Um, 
Mysterious Skin. Oh, good one. Oh. Yeah, it's got uh, Jordan Joseph Gordon-Levitt. When he looks like a twink, a cracked out twink. Exactly. Um, and it it, it, ta- it takes like heavy subject matter, and you know the film is just it's it's stunning. And I love uh, Greg Araki. I'm probably butchering his last name, but um, he's a great director, and I I love that film. I even went out. I had, I didn't realize that it was a book, but I went out and bought the book, and I love the. It's one of the the few times that I can say the book and the movie are equally good. Oh wow! One one day I'll challenge you on that greatness of Araki. Really? Okay. Yeah. Yes. One day. Yeah. There's only one time. movie he's made that's great. And you do Mysterious not Skin. Yeah. Mysterious and Skin is an excellent film. Yeah. Uh, third one, and I'm glad our uh, straight <laughs> friend Stan brought this movie up. Uh, he's Fran today. He's, he's Fran. Fran. I'm she sorry. she prefers to be called Fran. Okay. Yeah. Shim Fran. <laughs> <laughs> Even in our community, that's offensive. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> Oh, please. When have we not said offensive things about anybody? Yes, she ma'am. <laughs> and I said it. Uh, it would have to be Party Monster. Um, uh, yes. I was, I was so excited. You know, oh, hold on, Brenda. That, Brenda, uh-huh. you're welcome. Oh, thank um. you. <laughs> um, it's actually, before the film came out, I was uh, I actually used to watch E! True Hollywood Story. There was one, They did one on it. And they used interviewed to. <laughs> they still Do they it? still make it? Is E still on the air? Anyways, um, there was an E! True Hollywood story uh, about uh, the whole situation. It, they interviewed the author of the book, which was at the time called Disco Bloodbath, but they've now changed it to Party Monster. So as soon as it came out and I saw that the two principals were Macaulay Culkin and Seth Green, I was so excited about it. Oh, and, me too, yeah. And kind of the same reason, like in before, like weeks ago, I was talking about Pain and Gain, even though it's a true crime. Uh, it, it's still Weeks funny. It's such, it's such it's it looks fabulous that world, and you can see how you know the destruction of this person, and you know all these characters moving, and it's it seems like a lot of fun, but at the same time, you know, you realize that this actually happened to people. So I think that movie part for me, Party Monster. I, I think I had such high expectations that it let me down when I first saw it, but in subsequent viewings, it's actually gotten better for me. Yeah, I mean, it's a cheap, cheap, cheap movie. You can tell, even watching it now. Um, it was, but the story's good. And the acting's good. I mean, some people would talk bad about Macaulay Culkin in it, but he perfectly plays <laughs> yeah, that really kind of effective. femme. Because <laughs> people think he's being a caricature of gay, but Michael Alec acted really like yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. If you've seen, if you've seen uh, interviews with Michael mm-hmm. Alec, he nailed it, I think. Yeah. No, I, I think I'm, I'm ready to revisit that movie. I love the soundtrack. Love it. And when we when we get into soundtracks and music, weeks and film, from now, weeks from now, one of the things is that 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 soundtrack is what introduced me to Scissor Sisters, and it's just changed my life. And I, to me, that's how I get into music is through soundtracks, and I love that soundtrack to that film. No, and I love that. Like I said, like when you when I heard it was Macaulay Culkin and Seth Green, that would not be you know the first. I mean, if I was a casting director, those won't be the first two actors that would like pop in my head. But they totally killed it, and I, I love yeah, it they, it, it was it's taking a chance. It might not have worked initially. Like the buzz behind the film was more interesting than the film itself. But now I I like it a lot now. Uh, are, Curtis, are you ready, or do you want her to kind Thank of stretch you. it out some more? Thank you. Curtis copied off my paper. <laughs> I did. I was looking at her notes. High art is a really good one too. But. Um, <laughs> I look over. I have to say for anyone that's listening that maybe doesn't know a lot of gay movies or needs maybe the history of gay movies, The Celluloid Closet is a really good documentary. It's it stops at like ninety five, and the, honey, a lot has changed since then. It would be nice to see it updated. Um, but for me, like a revisit, <clears throat> that that'd be cool. Yeah, because it's a really interesting, and there's so many good movies on there that I'm just gonna quickly reference some of them, like The Boys in the Band or Cruising. That's on my or, list. Boys in the Band. Like, oh, you've never seen The Boys in the no, Band? No, I've seen oh, it. That's on yeah. like I my list of movies that I love. Um, for me, I have to choose an older one called The Children's Hour with Shirley MacLaine and Audrey Hepburn. Um, it's not really a gay movie, but it, it is. A gay it movie. is a gay movie. It's a coded gay movie, and it's not <laughs> even coded. Towards the end, she's really saying, "I feel this way," um, but it's a story about two um, single teachers. One is engaged, the Audrey Hepburn character, and a student, a malicious student, lies and says they're lesbians. Of course, they don't say they're lesbians. They whisper and say you know, something inappropriate, but they don't actually say they're lesbians, and their whole world falls apart because of one line, one rumor from a child. It's still a powerful, powerful mm. film. Um, I wonder if it's just that way for gay people to see that self-loathing. But um, that, you know, when Celery Closet came out, and Boys in the Band, the documentary Boys in the Band, mm-hmm. uh, Making Boys in the Band, talks about how a gay character, you know, then was written to be so, so self-deprecating, and 
you know, you, you sympathize with them because you felt that angst that they were going through. But now it's very different. It's, you know, you see a lot of the gay films that are being put out now. It's, there's, there's more celebration, but there's also more, it's, it's not, how do I put this? You know, we all have our roots of where we came from. And I feel that gay films now are exploiting sex are exploiting sex and it's just you know th- there, there's more quality stories that can come out of this i really think and i know i mean gay people used to protest like i talk about basic instinct a lot um they used to protest these movies that nowadays uh, they're more interesting gay depictions than not i would rather a gay person be the villain and serial killer than the dying hero or you know it, mm-hmm. to me it just seems more yeah interesting. it shows more more diversity I know, and I know that's weird to say, but I am a gay person, and I can say that. That uh, that's what I'd prefer. I would prefer. It took you this long to come out. <laughs> Twenty. I'm so proud of you. Yes. Twenty eight. <laughs> Coming out at the top. So, anyways, but what? Um, what I think is. What, what was that, Jordan? Stop in the. Did my eyebrows make noise? I'm sorry. <laughs> wow. They hit the room. <laughs> But uh, to me, like, it is true. Like, now I like I like it when a story isn't about being gay. Like, and Beginners to me was a great, um, we were just talking about this the other night, a great soft film about love, modern love to me. And his dad mm-hmm. just happens to be gay, and he gets to see his dad fall in love for the first time. And whether that's with a man or falling in love with a, you know, a woman for the first time at 80, I just thought it was a tender movie that wasn't about being gay. This is just a gay character, and this is what's happening. Um, and he, he doesn't die of AIDS or anything. He, mm-hmm. he dies, but... Um, that's not a spoiler. Um, <laughs> so I really did like that movie. And then um, I actually will steal from Brendan's because I, too, really liked High Art. And I know that is kind of a depressing film as well. But I think, yet again, it's not about being gay. It's not about being um, straight. It's not about being a, like the main character, Ali Sheedy, who just gives an amazing performance. Um, she, she's a drug addict artist who kind of attracts this woman who's attracted to her passion and her talent. And I just thought that's so much more interesting than... Um, Two girls going scissor style, you know? <laughs> and and you know the other character. Not to give too much away, it doesn't really show her like struggling. Oh, what's going on? She just she just kind of goes with what she's feeling. Yeah, and I adore that because it just feels so natural. And I don't mind if a gay movie's sad or happy or violent or this or that or that or exploitative. I just you know it's getting annoying where Rob's saying it's all we can sell to gay men is sex. And I know it, it, it's unfortunate. And unrequited love. There's. <clears throat> There is a lot of quality films that have been coming out from gay cinema, and uh, I'm I'm gonna reference the the, the kids are all right because I, I felt that that film showing the str- uh, normal struggles of a gay couple. It, it wasn't you know they weren't over the top plots or anything. it was just you know these are two two people that in a loving relationship you go through rough patches, you go through these these difficult times in your life, and you make it work. You figure out a way considering your family, considering the sacrifices you've already put into it, you're going to do the best you can. And I, I, I resounded a lot with that film. Uh, Brokeback Mountain's another one that, it, it's not on my list. Like my, my, my list, keep, my favorite keeps it more fluff, but Brokeback Mountain is not fluffer. I didn't pick that one. Um, I actually own that film. <laughs> I got it in the three ninety nine bin at a blockbuster closing sale. The Montrose blockbuster. <laughs> it was all sticky. <laughs> Sticky. Um, but Brokeback Mountain, you know, it's just they. It, it's it's unrequited love that you have in that film, but but, but what love? But they Ang loved Lee, each other so much. Ang Lee did such a he shot in such a poetic way that it it beautiful beautiful film and the imagery in that the last shot of holding the shirt and then it just pans out to the oh it just gets me and I, and I love it and I love that from a straight director. It, love knew no bounds there. It, was, it wasn't it was about being gay or straight. It was just about you find someone, you love them, and you do everything you can to try to be with them. And, you know, unfortunately, you know, spoiler alert for those who haven't seen Brokeback Mountain by now. They don't end up they, together. It, they, you know, they don't end up together, but it's, it's, it's a great film. Um, what I like about that film, and this is the difference, maybe this is because it was made by a straight filmmaker. This is what doesn't make it a gay movie. They show the point of view of the wives, what the wives go through about my spouse is cheating on me whereas like the Michelle Williams character cannot deal with the cheating whether he's gay or straight she can't deal with that cheating and she leaves him the Anne Hathaway character stays with it for the money and the appearances she deals with it in her own way and I thought a gay movie just would have seen these men as just trying to love each other but they're hurting people too they're cheating on their spouses and it shows that and I think that's what tears me up now but that's what broke my heart about that film and made that movie better is 
just that reaction shot of Michelle Williams when she sees them kissing, that changes the movie completely and says, this isn't just a gay movie about two people. They're being selfish and there are other people in this movie. It made it just so much bigger to me. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah, and, it, it shows, it gives like a complexity mm -hmm. because they're not only are they kind of struggling with it and, and it has also to do with the times and like where they live and whatnot, but then exactly like you said, they, they show the other people that are affected by it. And that's a lot. And I do want to, I do want to go slightly deeper into something. I mean, hopefully somebody has a su suggestion of a film because Brokeback Mountain seems like an obvious film to, to select, and I, I'm really happy that we were able to break it down a little further, because you're right, there it's not, it's not a film that's just gay. It's There's more going on in that film. Mm -hmm. um, so does anybody have a recommendation or something that they, they feel that goes, it's not maybe a standard gay film? Um, I don't know if, like, you guys can disagree with me, but maybe something like Mel. Disagree. <laughs> um, no, I think it's more about... You mean that Oscar-winning film? <laughs> Yes, I think more the point were just about like his his struggles and you know his rise in you know in politics and everything. I I really think it's more about him and the, the person and like who he affects around him as opposed to you know. And it is a more hopeful thing, even though it is about an assassination and and it. But it, I feel it ends on a really positive note and it ends on a very hopeful note. I cry every time I see I it. I cry the second the movie starts. And when you start seeing just, all those gay people getting arrested, I do. I just it, like, oh, I can't imagine. You know, and I think it was a good movie to come out when it did and um, you know, to really kind of show this new generation of, of gay people coming up that it hasn't always been glee on TV and, <laughs> and tons of gay it's people so everywhere. Yeah. And you know, I know I have nieces that are in, in grade school and high school right now who have openly gay friends and, and when I was in high school, you know, 62 years ago. You were the openly ago, gay friend? <laughs> I, was, I was the only, I was... In your segregated school? In my, I was uh, in friends. my little Amish one-room schoolhouse. Um, but, you know, I, there were, there were no, there was no internet. There was no gays on, there were, there no, were gays, no computers. <laughs> there were no computers. You threw but, rocks. you know, that idea that, that there were, that there would be just out gay kids running for student council would be was it such an alien thing and but I think it's, it's good for those movies to kind of remind us of that it's fantastic that the generation that your nieces are that they have gotten so comfortable with mm -hmm. people that are gay that to them it's nothing it doesn't matter so just imagine how that's going to evolve the next generation of politicians the next generation of people that are going to be working we're going to start being the ones that everything gets blamed on that's the <laughs> well, thing they accept you and they're like oh it's their fault um, but I, I did. I, I had one point that I wanted to kind of touch into that about Get in there. how it's uh, how for some people it's difficult. I don't know if, if you guys have seen the film Small Town Gay Bar, uh, produced oh, by Kevin Smith. It's, so good. It's a it's a excellent documentary about these different gay bars that are in rural America, uh, right by the Bible Belt. That they you have the clientele that drive miles out of their way just to vi just to be somewhere where they they're comfortable. With other people like them, and it, it, it's it's a poignant little documentary. Uh, I can't recommend it enough because it it shows that for a gen for a generation for certain people that in this day and age are still having to they're so afraid of being who they are in their natural surroundings or their their surroundings that they have to go so far out to just feel comfortable, feel like themselves. And there's this one person in the film that talks about how Monday through Friday I'm this person, but on Saturday and Sunday, I, I, I am me. I am who I am. And I, I think it's a great movie. And uh, that's, that's a film that makes me proud of film, uh, the gay cinema. Uh, then you, and is there any, uh, not, to, not to steer the ship, but is there a gay filmmaker that you think has transcended being a gay filmmaker, like a woman filmmaker or a black filmmaker? Like, is there a gay filmmaker who, like, they're just a great filmmaker and they don't isn't Gus Van Sant Gus Van Sant yeah. exactly I, I think Kimberly Pierce. oh I wasn't saying because I don't think there is one I just who well, is I think Kimberly Pierce I, I think she needs to build up her resume a little bit more but I, I you know, three like movies in 15 years yeah I, like I said you know yeah. maybe just just so you get more of an idea of her voice but I I, I like the films she's made yeah, me too no it, I, I think it's it's fantastic when filmmakers like that Gus Van Sant Kimberly Pierce they they step outside of something that is near and dear to their heart and they said i want to be challenged by the material i want to be challenged by cinema and they take that chance and sometimes it works sometimes it doesn't but you know it, it's i i respect a filmmaker like going back to ang lee i think for for a director who 
isn't gay to understand that world and to know you know and but his films are all over the place he he has such an eclectic uh uh resume um in any other films that you guys recommend um I, I love that, the, you know, I, I guess it came out kind of in a time where we were having, like, so many parodies, but another gay movie. Oh, I think that movie's hilarious. Yes. I think it's hysterical. It's, it's like a parody of those parodies, but, you know, with, like, a gay twist on it. I think that's oh. hysterical. I, I'm, I'm, I'm a big fan of comedy, and some of my favorites uh, were Girls Will Be Girls, which is the clip that we started off with. Um, it's three, three, three actors playing drag queens three actors playing the female roles in this film and they're clearly drag queens but they're treated as female roles in the film and it's just it's just one zinger after another and I, I love love that movie so much um, one movie that I, I guess isn't considered gay which kind of lead us into our, our my next question is for me Romy and Michelle's High School Reunion is one of my gayest favorite films ever um, I know it's not an outright gay film, but oh no, it's gay. It's pretty gay. <laughs> it's gay. Janine but... Garofalo <laughs> and oh, Alan <laughs> Cumming in one place. Did I you might... just need Parker Posey in there. Oh, that's right. I think I just <laughs> two Parker, two Posey. Um, you can't be two Parker, two Posey. So my question to you guys, just to kind of, uh, but before I get to that question, any other films that you guys want to? Or oh, Jordan. Um, one of my favorite films is I Love You, Philip Morris. It's a Houston movie. Which is a Houston film, and it's a true story. It's a true crime, and a Houston film. Have you seen it? We're bringing it all no, together. It's very it's good. It's an incredible good. movie. Jim Carrey and Ewan McGregor, and Jim oh. Carrey, who I really love, and I think he's he's sometimes one of the most underrated actors out there, because when he brings a performance in for a landing, he really does it right, and... Um, for those of you who haven't seen it, it's the, it's a true story about two men who meet in prison in Texas, and uh, one's a con artist, uh, Jim Carrey plays, and, and it's just it's this madcap, very funny, endearing, sad, but it, it but it's ultimately just really heartwarming uh, story about these two men and their and their travails over the course of you know their relationship, and um, that's one that I've. That's one I really enjoy, and that's a movie that, that every time I see it, it just makes me happy. And I actually want to see it again. I don't, I've only seen it once. We need to Is take Ewan McGregor like one of the most underrated actors doing interesting yes, work sure. nowadays? You just he, bought The Impossible, and he was phenomenal. Yeah, that. The Impossible, Beginners, this, I mean... Big Fish. And yeah, he just... I feel like he's always doing oh, subtle work. Oh, you, you, you haven't seen uh, Sam and Fish in, in the Yemen? No, you he saw that. He is fantastic in that movie. He's yeah. really. I think he's been good in everything. But he's that picking he's done. like interesting. So I mean, yes, he yeah. did. Check, it's like your Nicole Kidman. She's been picking interesting roles. Yeah. Um, but let let me ask my question because we're we're, we're getting down to to the wire here. Uh, Ewan McGregor being an actor who has has been fearless about playing whatever gay or straight. But what movies do you guys like that are straight? Or I'm sorry, they're not gay but can be very homoerotic. Like we start. We talked about. Interview the Vampire. Her that movie had a lot of uh, any Tom overtones. Cruise film is homoerotic. I think we were um, Fran and I were talking oh, before we went on air um, about Top Gun, which is really, really one of my favorite movies. I hate to admit, um, <laughs> but it really is very homoerotic. I've never and it's seen it. I've are you seen serious? It in it's a such long a. Time. It's like the original bromance. It is, <laughs> and there's so much in that military like super testosterone super masculine like the romantic lead is Kelly McGillis swinging her big dick everywhere um, <laughs> that's you know, right yeah it's like it is what does she say take me home or leave take, me forever no that's Meg Ryan with uh, who says that take me home or lose me forever nah -uh, she runs up to him and he's on the bike and Kelly McGillis runs up to Tom well she Cruise. says it because Meg Ryan says it earlier oh, in the film mother. but Meg that's Ryan once again Meg is. Ryan runs everything but um <laughs> Sorry, we Matt. almost bought you the women the other day. Sorry, we did. <laughs> it was a four. -pack. I wish I wish my face could translate. Women, Sex and City two, and Yaya Sisterhood. <laughs> <laughs> you know what though? Side note: Yaya Sisterhood, very good book, really shitty movie. My nana loves that movie. The book is amazing, but the the, the movie so is horrible. The, but... the film that I, I wanted to pick for that one was a uh, Point Break. Is it? Oh, yes, Catherine yes. Bigelow got that. Oh, there's a lot of gay overtones in that movie. Really. Oh. The climax I, of the film, like, uh, <laughs> which, okay, I won't spoil it. Oh, yes, don't spoil an 80s movie for us. <laughs> I've never seen it. It's good. Really? Uh, it's you, so, t it's like so 1990. It's do just either like, of you guys have a film that you feel it's... 
Well, come on, Death Becomes Her is one of the gayest films <laughs> of all time. And I don't know why it's not on Criterion, and I don't say that jokingly. It's, I don't. No, seriously. I've it's not even on Blu-ray. Maybe 974 That times. and The Witches of Eastwick, I Definitely. put me on a deserted island. With uh, a strap on? <laughs> for myself. And... Um, <laughs> But death, death becomes her definitely. Because you know, when you're a kid, you don't catch all the lines. I was in that. thinking that movie earlier too. At the, oh no, I'm not going to mention why I was thinking about it. Why? At the podcast Moving on. Ago. <laughs> so anyway, yeah. Uh, so death becomes her for me. I mean, yeah, it's pretty gay. Uh, you know, I was actually looking um, on the Daily Beast, and they have the top homoerotic movies, unintentionally homoerotic movies, and Point Break is number five. On the <laughs> What's list. number one? Number one is. Um, Sorry, sorry, sorry. 300. Uh, oh, that's a big yes. job. Why do straight guys like that, Stan? I watched it on mute. <laughs> Stan? Uh, no, Fran. Fran, Fran, why do you love 300 so much? It's bloody. It's like there's it's more tits it represents semen. than a chicken farm. Uh, I'll throw mine in really quick. Um, <laughs> I just, I have, honestly, just rewind. I, I have the feeling that the people who really like that movie are just sitting at home having a case of Miller Lite going, America, the entire time. That no, movie my plays. brother, my sister-in-law listens to our podcast. Hi, Lisa. My brother loves this movie, and I don't get it. Yes. Like, it's so gay. Lost Boys. Lost yes. Boys. Oh, my God. So Is gay. It? Yes. yes. I haven't. But what's yours, Brenda? What's yours? Oh, uh, being the horror fan I am, I hadn't watched the sequel until you know maybe like a year ago. But Nightmare on Elm Street Part Two. Yes. Uh, I'd actually like read an article, and that's what got my attention. And uh, apparently, there was a debate for years whether the screenwriter did that intentionally. You know, give it all the homoerotic uh, undertones, and apparently, it was on purpose. But. You know, it's funny to see that now. Like, it, it totally should be a, considered a gay movie. You, if you said, watch, if you watch, yeah. there's a seven hour, I think it's seven hour, maybe five, a five hour documentary about the Nightmare on Elm Street films from the beginning. It's one of the best documentaries you'll ever see. That. You, yeah, it's called Never Sleep Again. It goes from start to beginning, and it gets deep into these movies. Like, you'll get more information. And when they start talking about two, that's exactly what they said. It, it, the writer said it was a gay coming out story. And you watch it with that, it's actually, it makes it better. Because the second one's pretty, <laughs> the worst of them. Yeah. And with knowing that, it kind of gives it a tint, tint that makes it a more interesting movie. But yeah, it's beyond, it's gay overtone. I mean, literally, there's a man coming out of him. It's weird. It's, <laughs> it's wonderful. Um, I, I want to mention one last movie before we start wrapping up. Uh, I don't know how many of you guys have seen this one. It's the Paul Daniels' first film with Brian Cox, L.I.E. Ugh. <laughs> Um, I, I like it a lot. Uh, Stir his skin. It, you, pretty much that. The prequel. Oh, uh, you well, nobody picked it. I, I can't believe that. I thought somebody was going to. Priscilla, Queen of the Desert? I thought you put I was head. laughed at in the pre-brief when I brought that up. What's I, a pre-brief? Are you thinking of... That's what I, I, I heard, before. Yeah, I heard I put, somebody say, bring it up. I'm surprised nobody brought it up during the podcast. Bring it on. It's one of my favorite films. Well, Priscilla, I mean, it, it goes without saying. I mean, Priscilla, Queen of the Desert is an amazing film. I do want to throw out, though, because we were talking about a lot of gay and lesbian themes, um, and Priscilla kind of brings up the point of the transgender experience in films, and of course, Boys Don't Cry is a really uh, powerful movie. Harrowing film. But I want to really do a shout out for Trans America, which Trans was- Trans America was excellent. was an excellent film, and it's very mainstream, and Felicity Huffman does an amazing job, and really treats that character with a lot of respect. Yeah, and I think I and there's some, it's not the best movie, and there's some choices that were, um, you know, Made that I would not have made, but oh, Mavie uh, and Rose, but it's uh, oh, the little boy. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I love Mavie and Rose. There's some good uh, train movies. So I think it's like gay movies. It's a little behind on. No, there's sure. a lot of good ones, and we're actually. I'd like to put it out to you, listeners. Uh, when we post this episode, if you guys want to post on our Facebook uh, some of your favorite gay films and why you love these movies. Uh, there's a lot of great, like he just mentioned Movie and Rose, and uh, I was going to mention Notes on a Scandal, like that one. The, the That's how I want my gay characters, villainous. Uh, if you have <laughs> yeah. not seen Notes on oh, a Scandal. The Spanish film Bear Cub. Oh, that's oh, really, see, that's yeah, I mean, there's, there's, movie. does the skin I live in count as a gay movie? <laughs> <laughs> Spoiler alert. It's a trans movie. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you and your freaking spoilers. Um, but I do want to put it to our listeners too, once this episode goes live, Post some uh, some of your favorite gay films, you know, in honor of a Gay Pride Month with Pride this year falling on Saturday, uh, June 29th. Hopefully you guys have a lot of fun. Be safe. 
Uh, we'll be out there. Curtis will be out there. Ha- In my out. booty shorts. Uh, consent forms. He <laughs> was <laughs> <laughs> selling consent forms with lube and condoms. Fake IDs. Um, and the other yeah. thing that Brenda was kind enough to remind me is after, you know, once you guys post about your favorite gay films, why you love them, also let us know what you want to hear, what topics you want us to discuss, uh, anything you want to know about us, about what we love. Um, Curtis will go more into his anal bleaching at that point if you like. I've never done it by sweet. step. I know. But stain you know, by stain. Uh, th- this is this is movies the podcast, and this is our pride episode. Uh, th- this is Rob. This is Jordan. This is Curtis. This is Brenda. Franiel. And Fran. <laughs> happy Pride. Bye. 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 Balls were any bigger. They'd be Rob's. <laughs> My Mexican balls. It'd be in Rob's mouth. <laughs> oh, wow. Um, so let's play a little catch up. What's everybody been up to? Oh. Ain't no bleaching. <laughs> Stop talking. So you're stealing his story. <laughs> no, I'm asking him. Like, I want to hear the oh, there's story. Oh, there's a did question you, mark at the end of did that. Did you get it? No, Anyways. <laughs> you know, you can't do that at home with a Q tip and Clorox. <laughs> now you tell me. I learned the hard way. I saw it on Pinterest. <laughs> <laughs> what have we been doing? Um, I am very excited. We saw the other day we screened as a group um, interview with the vampire in the theater. In the theater on the big screen, which was oh, amazing. That's so funny because I don't remember being there. <laughs> oh. It's weird that we didn't invite girls. Boys night. Boys night. Boys. Uh, there night. were girls there. Let's be honest. Well, that you know, so <laughs> <laughs> there were ladies. <laughs> I don't think anybody there, were, there was a lady. There were broads. <laughs> Well, it was we. Um, I forgot to, how depressing that movie yeah. was. We have friends who and uh, Jordan's associate roommate, my partner, his partner <laughs> <laughs> at my law firm, yeah. my partner. Uh, people as, as Esquire. Yeah, people <laughs> love that movie. Like people just adore. That's their favorite movie, and I hadn't seen it in probably a decade. It's a beautiful film, and I think it holds up really well. I, I mean, it, it, I, I do think it holds up yeah. really well. Yeah. It's. It was like Rob said. It was just. A, it was sad. I didn't realize how sad it was. I think, it, the, I had watched it so often that I either focused on a score. Or I just really enjoyed a lot of the performances, and this time I was kind of watching it from a perspective. And maybe it's because you had told me you hadn't seen it in ten years. Mm-hmm. So I was curious, kind of looking at it from that point of view. What would you think of it now? And I just felt really sad the entire time. <laughs> Yeah, it, it definitely had it had a sh- ton of gay undertones in it. But Do you know what makes me sad about it is that Kirsten Dunst peaked. No, she in didn't. That film. <laughs> if you bring up melancholia, I'm throwing you out of this. What room. about Bachelorette, sucker? Oh, I love Bachelorette. What, what's that line? Oh, uh, she's like, that's not on the itinerary. And Kirsten wait, Dunst wait. says, reviving a fucked up bitch wasn't on the itinerary. <laughs> so Kirsten Dunst is having right now. She's having her end of career Betty White resurgence. Uh, with Bachelorette, <laughs> All good because things. she peaked thirty years ago. <laughs> with, uh, I know. God, that was twenty. That movie is twenty years old. Twenty years old. Yeah. It did age well. I think I was mostly. It's not a. It's a good movie. It's not a great movie. It's got some amazing. So and you know and, and the to sets think, are amazing. And to think that now we've kind of become overwhelmed with the vampire and it's <gasps> Fran the producer. Fran Leibovitz. I love your shoes, by the way. <laughs> I love your tuck. <laughs> So that's why that roll of duct tape fell out of his pants. Uh, oh, his that bag. was a roll of duct tape. That's why RuPaul's Drag Race got canceled. They ran out of duct tape. <laughs> they didn't know what to do. Super glue it. Hot glue gun. Ooh, crafts. <laughs> so DIY. Um, this is going to be not that every episode in the past has been an overtly gay episode, but this is our Pride episode. So we're all excited about being just a little extra gay today. Yay, gay. <laughs> <laughs> And for those oh wait, we're supposed to not be so gay. Well, because the censor said if you were any gayer, they would have to put you on Bravo. We did get banned in Iowa, by the way. No, that was. New they Jersey. said more the Brenda government. to butch it up. <laughs> more Brenda to butch it up. Brenda does bring the testosterone <laughs> level Brenda's- up. A- you know Mary Tyler Moore Ooh, very well. We did Night of a Thousand Stars together. Oh, funny story. She has diabetes. And that was a clip from one of my favorite gay films, Girls Will Be Girls, starring Jack Plotnick. Uh, what are the other two ladies? W. No, oh, it's uh, Coco Peru. Coco Peru. And then the one that eats a Barla? can of cheese. Barla. Yeah. Barla. Yes. Uh, this is Movies the Podcast. Uh, this week we're covering Pride fil- or gay films in, in honor of Pride. Uh, my name's Rob. This is Jordan. This is Brenda. And this is Curtis. 
save the best gay for last. What, what? <laughs> Curtis of Anal Bleaching, the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> and our producer extraordinaire. I'm Rusty. This is Fran, right? Fran. <laughs> Franiel. In honor of Pride, uh, Stan has decided to come uh, dressed in drag. 